Right, this is basically just a test for microphones, these little things here. They've been giving me an awful lot of trouble by just cutting out halfway through doing a video. So I was going to keep this to myself, but um, I thought I'd show you how to do something. It might be a bit interesting and how to recycle parts. But first, a very important shout out to LR Direct. You remember when we had a, a vacuum pump, a brand new vacuum pump? And it was leaking out of here. LR Direct not only supplied a replacement, but also paid for the shipping for the replacement. I only had to pay the import duties again, but that was minimal. That was like $32, $38 or something like that. I can't remember. <clears throat> so now this is the one that's going to go onto the 300 TDI, and then that job is done. However... At JP's shop, we've got a genuine Wabco here. Now, we had a problem. This is off my 300 TDI, and if you remember, it had an awful lot of back pressure, even though the engine was rebuilt. We thought sort of smoking and oil coming out of it, the, the breather and stuff like this. And the reason was, somebody had half-assed siliconed, I don't know if it was this one or this one, um... A little brass cap in it because it had popped out. And it seems to be quite common. Now, we were going to do an experiment on this, and we probably still will. Oh, I can't remember the size across here. It seems to remember it was 11 sixteenths. It was a really odd size to get the little plugs to fit in here. Um, they're actually crimped over just to make life that bit more interesting. Um, however, I went to JP's this morning... Because I'm going to cannibalise this pump. Because I'm going to take the, the pump off the engine this afternoon. And see if the gasket off this one will fit and seal. Who knows? Because whilst it's on the engine, I can pressure test it. And make sure it's not going to leak, you see. That's a method of my madness. But, um, one of the things wrong with the original pump... This one here. And you can see I've made a blanking plate for it. Um, <clears throat> the... Oh yeah, I've got it here. I've got it taken off. That's why I took this off. To, if you can see here, the the face is here. Is, it's gone through its hardness and I had to change the cam as well. But, there's a beauty on here. And they're really easy to get out. Because all it's held in with is some very long grub screws that go through here. So what I intend to do, if I, ever, if I ever get it round to it, is to... I'm going to sandblast that, and that's why I've got the cover on there. I've made several different thicknesses of gaskets to seal this. Now I'm going to seal the pipe, and we'll put it through this blaster and see if we can tidy it up, because this was working. Uh, this was working, but like I say, it was... Uh, the face had gone. Now... Like I say, we, we thought we'll use this one for parts and cannibalise it, and we might be able to fix it. I keep repeating myself, don't I? Anyway, uh, what's, what was I going to say? Ah, yes, now. One of the things I tried to save some money for Joe for was this little 90-degree bend that goes to your brake booster. And it's really common that they split. I actually cut it open so I could pull the pipe out. But it's about... Well, I think, it's, I think we measured it at 12 millimeter to go onto there. So what we did was, we bought some um, a silicone hose, a black silicone hose, with a 90 degree bend in it, 12 millimeters, and it was long, like this. So we put the silicone hose with a couple of clips on it, onto the plastic pipe, and then used the remaining bit of silicone hose to go onto your brake booster. That saved a ridiculous amount of money. You know, like, I mean, I think the hose was about, I don't know, 15 bucks or something like that. But the complete Land Rover hose, I think it was over $100. Maybe $120 for a piece of pipe. So, just look out for that. I'll put a link in the description below where we got it from, because it was really good. And no doubt in Europe you'll be able to find it all over the place. But here in Canada, pff, if it's not made out of seal skin, we don't want to know. So, what I'm going to do is, like I say, blank this off. Whack it through the sandblaster, and then we're going to swap over this part. Now, 
uh, just whilst I'm rambling on, there are very, very few parts for these pumps you can buy. I know some people in Australia do the little caps, but like I say, with them being crimped over, I'm always now wary if they're going to pop out again. But can we save the gasket? Oh, I don't know. We'll see. Right. So I've partially sandblasted this, but the uh, paint is like an enamel. Very difficult to get off. So I'm going to soak that a little bit in uh, paint stripper to see if we can soften it up for the sandblaster. Next thing, this old damaged pump here, we're going to try and get the cover off. I've drilled the rivets out. Let's see it open. Oh, there we go. See what I mean about all the oil? See, it's knackered. I mean, what can you do with it? Well, it's just surprising. So that's where the seal had gone or something, so it was getting oil inside of there. However, we can see our valves in there, and there is a very nice seal. Thank you very much. So, we've got that bit. I'm not going to take it out of there yet. Look at the state that. Now, if you wanted to get this apart, uh, I'll, I'll show you, but it's it's kind of sort of tricky. Um, not really now. We've got bloody things everywhere here. Oh, yeah. We need to get this piece out of here. Now, this can be tight. <laughs> surprise, surprise, it's not. Now, I'd suggest you wind it all the way out. Rather than leaving it in, because... It sits on this taper here. It's pushing down on this taper, both sides, to hold it in. So you've got to get it cleared off quite a lot, really. I'm going to warm up the casing a bit. Oh, if you're ever wondering why I never continued doing the vacuum pump experiment, uh, advice from legally people, because if you have an accident with it, I don't want to be responsible. So that's why I stopped. Expansion works wonders. Now, and the reason why you can't get into it, you, if you can see there, it's like a valve collet. There's two collets in there, and you've got to compress that and get the little springs out, the little collets out at the same time. Uh, but you can't buy the seal. But we've got this bit. We've got the bit we want. It is a bit warm at the moment, so we're just going to cool, leave that to cool. And uh, the next one is scrapped in. Uh, we'll see if we can get the cover off that other pump. Let's see what's wrong with it. Yeah, that sounds like a plan, doesn't it? Well, what an interesting afternoon. I took the uh, cover off the new pump that's on the engine. Not the new new pump, but the one that was leaking. And uh, the gasket's fine. It doesn't look as if there's anything wrong with it. However, it was leaking from here. But I think I can just, I think I found out what was wrong with it. Look very carefully here. The seal's been nipped here. Look. The seal has just nipped. I'm not sure what this is like for focusing in. But if I turn it to the light at different angles, you can just to say, see where the seal's nipped. Hmm, interesting. I wonder what this one's like. Now this one is uh, a little bit different because that's really easy to get out. Hmm. I think this is going to work. Um, yeah. 
So if I put this seal into that pump and then test it with a smoke tester, we can prove it's working. Now, should I put some sealer on it? Is that going to help? I don't know. Uh, I'm getting a bit confused with every, all the stuff I've got kicking about. So what I'm going to do, wash that seal off and then we'll come back and have a look. So the smoke tester's on and it's sort of bubbling away a little bit. Uh, but it's not at this side. This is cured now. Um, I think it's... I think there's a piston open because we have turned this over since. And I think a little bit of uh, smoke is getting through an intake valve or an exhaust valve because it makes a strange sort of noise. But anyway, th that's not the problem. The problem is solved. It's not leaking anymore out of there, so that's good. Um, all the valves are good, everything's nice and tight, nothing coming down here. Yeah, let's have a quick look around see if we can see any massive amount of smoke. I don't think so. Well, I think that's where it's coming from because I've only got the exhaust blanked off at the moment. I haven't got this blanked off. Uh, I didn't want to take it all to bits again. But there's certainly pressure in there. See what I mean? Right, that's one test done. So what we're going to do now is take that pump off and fit the brand new one on. It was supplied by LR Direct. Sorry about that. I just stood on some, uh, some plastic. All right, back in a bit. I'm about to fit this new vacuum pump onto this 300 TDI, but I just thought I'd take the opportunity to just to show you why some people have such a difficulty trying to fit the pumps. You can see here, the cam is sticking out. These are a double-ended cam, so there's another one at the other side. But um, what we've got to do is turn the engine over until these two a vertical. Now I can't do this and hold the camera at the same time, so I'll come back in a minute. See? That's what I was talking about. You see where the lobes, there's a lobe here and a lobe here. Now that pump will go straight on because you're putting the pump against this flat here. Alright, so let's get that bolted on. Now um, I'm going to use Hylomar sealer and two gaskets as I usually do. Just a little hot tip to take any Hylomar off a surface, uh, you can use acetone, it cleans it up really nice. And because Hylomar obviously is resistant to uh, fuel and solvents, except for acetone. So uh, let's get that fitted and then we can uh, test this, make sure it's okay. Right, so switch the swap machine on. And you can hear now, it's gone to virtually nothing. Um, it is a bit difficult to smoke test a machine once it's already got the oil in. That's irrelevant, but this, this pump isn't leaking at all now. This is quite good. The gasket's good. That little tiny drop of uh, pressure escaping is out of the turbo uh, wastegate actuator. There's nothing we can do about that. But for the rest of it, is nice and oil tight. So that sorted that problem out. All it was was a stupid gasket, but you can't buy the gasket. Anyway, uh, hats off to LR Direct for sending us another pump.